What up, what up, what up, what up? You already know what it is. You have just entered the war zone. You know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that situation when you got, we, we are living in a war zone. I want to salute to all of the generals, all of the, the captains, lieutenants, sergeants, majors, privates. I salute you, salute. You already know what it is. We have Keith Murray out there, which seems to be like a whole lot of clout chasing that's being applied by Murray for whatever reason that is. Uh, Murray has went on a few rants, uh, getting after a few females that uh, was in the uh, hip hop industry one being uh, the Queen Foxy Brown. And, uh, you know, him uh, basically exposing or attempting to expose what he has done uh, more than two decades ago uh, in uh, private confinement of a bedroom of some sort. Now, you have people that may believe that, and you have many others who don't believe it. So, the thing is, you have Murray also going off on rants, attempting to get after the king prodigy. All right? Mogul, big time in hip hop. Big, big time. Was he went on? I shot you after I did my verse, and he says some. God bless the dead. He says some guilty niggas feeling guilty about some spaceship. He because he meant because I was the Philly born king. And Redman was uh, smoke good all the time. And he was like, I don't give a fuck about niggas smoking weed and all of that. And he said, niggas feeling guilty about some space. I had cosmic slop, like the universe, talking about aliens and smoking blunts with the aliens. And Redman and then and Eric brought it to my attention. And he said it on that record that, you know, you feeling guilty about some space shit. You was first, baby girl, so just face it. And then Havoc was like, oh, I seen him, and Havoc was like, yo, Murray, we're not talking about you. Uh, we can go to Hot 97, and we can squash it. I said, well, it ain't really no beef. It ain't really no beef like that, like that. But then, you know, we, Prodigy was going at it with it. And then at the Apollo with LL Cool J, I said, yo, if he say that part, I'ma grab him and I'ma take him, I'ma take him, I'ma kick him off that stage. And LL said, yo, Prodigy was standing, I was here, LL was here, Prodigy was there. And he, LL was like, yo, it's like millions of people watching Murray, you know, just relax, don't do it. So I, we was on the stage, if you look at the, you can punch it up. I did the LOD roll on stage and I did my thing. And then I don't know if he did it or not. Something, he said it or not, but something went on. But yeah, he was coming at us. And then um, at the tunnel, me, God bless the dead, A plus, Skippy, and Axe, and Horse, was in the bathroom, Fat Joe was there, Prodigy was there, and then um, Plus was like, look at Prodigy, and then he was like, what? What? And then, and then Fat Joe, and I was like, what? And then Plus was like, what? And then eventually happened, we all left at the same time out of the tunnel. So we was at the corner, and his man, God bless the good day, twin was like, yeah, it's time, it's time. And we was looking at each other. They was looking at each other. 
So I was like, it's time, time. We thought they'd be saying it's time to get busy. So Skippy snuffed one of them. Wow. He snuffed Prodigy, I think. No, twin. I kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of can't remember, but he, Skippy snuffed one of them. A plus snuffed one of them. I snuffed one of them. And then, uh, I think, I snuffed the Prodigy. And then, um, Axe and uh, Wink was, one of them was beating the uh, twin under the car and Trigger the Gambler was there, beating one under the car and the cops was like, yo, take it around the corner. And I was chasing Prodigy, brought foot, chasing, chasing, trying to catch him to bring him back to the fight, right? And the cops was like, yo, take it around the corner, take it around the corner. So, and then Prodigy was like, yeah, I was gonna go get the gun, I was wanting to go get the gun, but whatever, whatever, like that. And then Capone, I saw Capone, no, Busta Rhymes. I saw Capone one time, Capone was in Queens, I called Capone's and we had an issue, but then we squashed it then. Busta Rhymes was the one who was in Jones Beach, and I was there, and Prodigy was there. And then I was backstage, and Buster Ross brought us together, and then we took a picture. And then his no, his man, one of Prodigy Mans, was like, "Yo, he back here." I went back there, and then we took the picture. And Buster Ross was there. We took the picture, and then um, his man got us on the phone, and then we was about to do something, and then we squashed the beef. And Prodigy was like, "Yo." Murray, we was young, I was young, 25, 20, and we was just wildin', I was like, yeah, you right, you right, you right, then we squashed it, and then they went to Vegas or something, and then I heard he had ate an egg and regurgitated it, and then he died, so I was like, I'm glad that me and Prodigy squashed our beef before he died. Okay, now you heard Keith Murray's side of how the uh, beef between him and Prodigy went down. Let's listen to what Prodigy had to say about the beef between Keith Murray and Mob Deep and the, the two camps. Back to Queensbridge, because we had another show in the city for that night. Onyx was shooting a video at Irvin Plaza, Union Square, in Manhattan. They wanted Mob Deep to do a cameo. Chilling outside with the twins and a few of our boys between the scenes. Irvin Plaza was right across the street from my old summer school, Washington Irvin. This rapper named Keith Murray walked up and asked if I was taking shots of him on the intermission skit on the infamous. When I vented all my frustration for my first album flopping. Sick with my mouth, I said, nigga, if the shoe fits, this bitch ass nigga just walked away from me and never said anything else. Can you believe that? If you listen to the skit, I didn't say any names or directed at anyone in particular. And no, yeah, throwing them rap ass niggas with your half ass rhymes, talk about how much you get high, how much weed you smoke, and that crazy space shit that don't even make no sense. Don't never speak to me when you see me, word. So, if someone thinks that skit is towards them, he must have some insecurity and feel that way about himself. Fucking punks. A new club opened up on the West Side Highway in Manhattan called The Tunnel. And oh my God, Jesus Christ, we will be in that spot every Sunday like church. Funk Master Flex DJ, along with his fella in Big Cap. This was the mecca of all clubs. The best club that ever opened in America. Capacity 4,000. Co-ed bathrooms. It was our generation Studio 54. We ran through the tunnel like we owned it. This dude named Chris Lighty, a well-known manager and party promoter, ran the door. If you weren't cool with him, you waited outside for hours upon hours and paid top dollar to get in. Chris managed the Jungle Brothers, Q-Tip, and LL Cool J. He let all 40 of us in without paying. We got so comfortable with him that one night I pulled him to the side 
and gave him a gun to sneak in. He did it. One gun became two, two became three, and the next thing you know, I was handing him book bags full of knives, shanks, screwdrivers, guns, plus other sharp and blunt objects. Chris handed the bags off to me in the bathroom, and I passed the tools out to the boys. Try to understand. Number one, we're famous. And number two, every hood in the tri-state area was in that club, and it was dangerous. We never started trouble, but just imagine how we could finish it. Chris was a corporate dude who dressed in hoodies, jeans, and Timberlands and came up working with Def Jam, practically raising the industry by Russell Simmons. One cold night on our way inside the tunnel, Havoc and I pulled Chris to the side and asked him to manage us since he had so much experience in the business. A smile spread across his face. Hell yeah, he said. I'll do that. We walked into the jam-packed tunnel one night with a crew of 50, heading toward our favorite spot, the side of the bar opposite the exit. Yemi led the pack, pushing people out our way. Oh shit, that's Mob Deep. We saw like 50 other niggas walking towards us, pushing people out the way too. It was Wu-Tang playing, with a sweaty, shirtless, old dirty bastard leading the pack. Prodigy, Old Dirty said, looking at me. Oh, shit, come here, man. He grabbed and hugged me mad tight, getting his sweat all over me. Nasty. I love you, Pete, ODB said. Kissed my cheek and walked away with his crew. Every time Funkmaster Flex played Nas or Marv Deep, we lost control, slam dancing, tossing girls in the air, spilling drinks on ourselves. Chris Lighty pulled me to the side one night, knowing he just gave me a small armory of weapons. Please don't kill anybody in here, he said. They have cameras all over the place now. Don't worry. If we do something, we gonna do it right, I assured him. One Sunday, a few weeks before New Year's 1998, we saw Keith Murray by the bathroom on the second floor. We had just arrived and met Chris in the bathroom to get our bag of weapons. I finished passing out the weapons, and we walked out. And this punk-ass nigga is standing there, looking scared to death when he saw us, because he was by himself and probably heard all the stories of us beating people raggedy. Northern Twin were fiending to get him. What's up? They were in my ear asking. We got the drop on him. Yeah, we got the drop on him, but for what? I said. Even though he had asked if I was talking about him on that skit, he never said or did anything offensive to me. So I told him to fall back. Leave him alone, I kept telling him. Leave the boy alone. We had so many weapons, we would have killed that boy. And it wasn't my style anymore to take advantage of a weak, defenseless person. At that point in my life, I realized that it was wrong to abuse the destructive power we had. You only hurt people when it's necessary, I told myself. My boys were upset with me for not giving them the green light, but I knew it was the right choice. After a few hours of partying, Money No, Godfather and I left early with some girls. It was close to Christmas 1997, and snow and ice lined the ground outside. Money No and I walked to the parking lot to get my car, while Godfather walked with the girls to their car. Money No and I were waiting for the light to change across the street when we saw Keith Murray with four of his boys standing ten feet to our right. Yeah, what's up now? One of his boys said to him. Let's see what's up now. Pass me your gun, Money No said. I had a big 9mm on my hip all night. Nah, chill, I said. I wanted to fire the shots. What's up with all that shit you was talking on your album? Keith Murray walked up and asked after his boys pumped him up with gas. Are you serious? I looked at him and asked. 
How am I going to shoot this dude and get away with it? I was thinking. All right. I'm going to take him down the dark shadows toward 10th Avenue. One of Keith Murray's boys and Money No started beefing about who could fight better. I suggested that we take it across the street, out of sight, so the cops wouldn't break us up. They reluctantly agreed. As we crossed the street, Money No kept asking for the gun, but I refused. I couldn't wait to get in the shadows of the next block and see the look on their faces when I started squeezing bullets at them. Now, should I shoot the kill, shoot the wound, or shoot the scare them? I decided to just shoot Keith Murray and wound him. A police squad car was coming up on my left when we got to the double yellow lines in the middle of 11th Avenue. Keith Murray jumped in front of me like he changed his mind about stepping into the shadows across the street. I could see him ready to swing. The cops are right there, I warned him. Chill until they pass. But he decided to punch me in the mouth in front of the cops. How corny is that? My first thought was, this nigga punches like a girl. My second was, get distance between these cops immediately before backup arrives and we all get frisked. The police put on the sirens and lights. I ran to get rid of the gun behind the van, tossing it in the snow, covering it with more snow. Then I looked up. Money no knocked out Keith Murray's man. He hit the ground and slid on some ice underneath the cop car. As I was walking back toward them, Keith Murray was talking to the cops, pointing at us, saying that we started it. The police was cool. They simply said, you guys go that way and you guys walk the other way. Them niggas don't even understand how lucky they are. God was truly on their side. I guess God was on my side too, because I might have gotten locked up. Keith Murray must have felt death down that dark street. When he saw that squad car coming, it must have been like Jesus Christ coming to save him. Um, Murray is not an icon, uh, especially when you put him up against Prodigy. Prodigy is a icon, like for real, for real, in the thick of things when hip-hop was hip-hop. And Prodigy uh, always been a solid stand-up dude. Always held it down. Always. Um, always been respected by the toughest and the most official in the industry. Prodigy is very, very official behind the scenes and on the scenes. His family is official behind the scenes, for real, for real. So, I love it when people go after others that have passed on and uh, want to uh, comment in a negative way because that's nothing but negative I don't care what you had uh, uh, with a deceased person in the past um, it's negative if you're not speaking positive about the person that has passed away you are speaking in a negative light on that person and you definitely still have feelings about that for whatever reason a real person is not going to hold any grudges if, it, you know, if they pretty much grew up from the situation and, and uh, felt like, you know, they were true to themselves in that situation. So my thing is, Murray, I'm speaking to you, Murray. How are you going after Pride? Pride's not here to defend himself. But you didn't do this when Pride was here. You didn't do this when Pride was alive. You had an ample amount of time to do that when Pride was alive, but you didn't. You choose now 
to do it? You choose now to say that about pride? Like, really? So now is the best time to talk about pride. Is that a fact? You know, you, you, you got to look and li listen to people. You have to listen to people, their actions, and the way they are delivering a certain message to the public or to an individual. You have to listen to these people. You One makes you wonder. It, it really does make you wonder if Murray was even telling the truth about Foxy and Shawana and, you know, these other female rappers that he allegedly has been with. It really makes you wonder, was he telling the truth about that also? Because this right here with the whole prodigy thing seems to me to be an absolute big time cat, lie, fake news, whatever you want to categorize it as. That's what it seems to me to be. Period. I don't want to hear that Keith Murray is 100% correct. How? How do you know? You got to listen to certain things. Now, I'm not saying that he's 100% wrong because I don't, I don't know. I don't. But just from my synopsis, from my diagnosis, from my observation, what I'm conveying to you is that you have to question what this guy Murray is saying because he's saying that he snuffed Prodigy and uh, Prodigy ran and, and all of that talking about he was going for a gun, right? Now, then he also said that when he was with LL Cool J and Prodigy was standing right there with LL Cool J, he said if Prodigy go on stage and say them lines, he gonna snatch him off stage. Now, I find that real hard to believe that Prodigy didn't say nothing. I, I I really really do. I'm sorry, I do. I don't I don't. No, I I, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you, Murray, at all. I don't believe you one, not one second. Do I believe you? Prodigy told the truth about you. You want to know why I say Prodigy told the truth about you? Because Murray, you didn't say nothing to Prodigy. When Prodigy did say that about you, you didn't say nothing. You didn't get after him. You didn't go on a rampage and, and, and uh, get on some form of a social media platform. Uh, you didn't do any of that. You didn't go on a radio show and talk about how you, when you see Pride is on site. You didn't do none of that. None of that. But Prodigy, he calling you all type of... You know what I'm saying? Girl that, girl that, nigga and all that. You know, he getting straight at you. He's giving you fight words and all that. You, he get, he's he like, yo, I want that smoke. You, I mean, if you want it, I got it. I'm ready to give it to you. That's how pride, that's the way pride came off to me. Uh, when he explained his situation from his own mouth about you, Murray. Period. Nobody else saying this. Nobody else is saying what P said and all. No, P said that out of his own mouth, period. You didn't do nothing when P said that, period. I'm not trying to hear none of that. If you're from the streets and you know what it is, you already know what it is, period. You didn't say nothing like that. You didn't do nothing like that. So stop faking like you, you know what I'm saying? Like you really that guy like that. You wasn't that guy because P just shut you up. And he's shutting you up again, right right now. He's shutting you up. Go to talk about the man, and we have proof that what you're saying is not is pretty much not true because it's not true because you would have said something to P after P just let the world know what was going on between your camp and his, period. P told us. We didn't... No, no, one of P's man didn't tell us. You told, uh, P said it. P's like, yo, this is what happened. P said that. Nobody else said that. P said that. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Where you get where you get all of this? P did this and and, and P ran and all of that. Yeah, like P said. He was about to take you straight out of here, bro. He said that. Yeah, and if he got the joint, like you said, you snuffed him in front of the police. If he if he got the joint, why in the world would he stand there? Nah, he's trying to get up out of there. He, he's trying to get up out of there. If that's the case, that makes sense. That makes even more sense to me. He got that hitter on him. Why is he going to stay right there when you see that the boys is right there? He's not. Nah, he's not. Nah, he's he trying to get. He's trying to evade. That makes sense. If you understand art of war, you understand that the king, the general, the emperor could never get caught. We cannot get caught. You understand that. You understand those principles if you under if you live in by the code. He understand that he had to invade. He had to evade the situation and bring you somewhere where you definitely didn't want to be. You were running right into a web. That's what you was that's what was happening. You was running right into his web. But you were spared. You were spared because the police came up on y'all again. So I don't believe you at all. And what really has me to understand my conviction of you about me not believing you at all, like at all, period, because I don't believe that you said what you said in front of LL Cool J and Prodigy, and Prodigy said nothing. We need LL Cool J on the line, all right? Because I don't believe that not for one second. I don't. And Prodigy said nothing. I don't believe that. And let me. And what also gets me to understand that what you are saying is extremely, immensely fabricated is that prodigy already explained what happened between you and him and not only that he didn't explain it in a nice polite way he explained that he was calling you a, a itch ass nigga you know what I'm saying he was calling you a straight biatch fam <laughs> you know what I'm saying you didn't say you didn't get on record or, or, or go on a radio station or or, or, or go to a magazine and 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 Put some quotes on out to the public about Prodigy was lying and all of that. You didn't do any of that when Prodigy was alive, my man. So let's stop it. Let's just stop it right now. Let's stop all of the fake cat fake news. Let's stop all of that, man. Let's stop it. You 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 got after Foxy, and that was just you know that was just a girl move, fam. It was, it was just a girl move. You know what I'm saying? We already heard. You know what I'm saying? Big rumors that you was a straight homie dote. You know what I'm saying? You was you straight good day or bid die. You know what I'm saying? Because you said it out your own mouth. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, and we also heard rumors about you, Eric Sherman, and, and that whole thing going on. So, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's just a lot of like fakery coming from your side. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling how you are attempting to coerce the uh, youngins into getting them to think that an OG or this is the way you're supposed to be talking about, you know, females and all that, you know what I mean, to the whole public, like like a girl, just gossip, like gossip. That's gossip to me, like gossiping. And all of you dudes trying to rob Murray in my comment section, you know what I'm saying? You know, you girls too, because ain't no real girls. I mean, ain't no real dudes gonna be following behind uh, the path of somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just the bottom line. They're gonna know what it is. But you, then again, you could be youngins. I'm not sure. You could be like them super, super youngins that's like, you know, uh, just don't understand, don't have no direction. And I get it because a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of our OGs have been locked up for a long time. A lot of our OGs have been killed, murdered, slaughtered. And, you know, there's no sense of direction 
with a lot of you youngins. So on that note, I, I'm, I can understand a, a, a tad, but this is why I'm here to help you. You know what I mean? Get you to understand. Don't be following behind no dude like that. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that we don't give it up like that. Ain't no true G giving it up like that, family. All right? I just want to let you know that. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to pride. We love you. We love the family. You know, straight up. We love your family. Mob deep forever. You know what I'm saying? And you already know what it is. I love you all. I need you all to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you think Keith Murray straight capping, fake news. And let me know what you think, yo. Let me know what you think about Pride. Pride already explained himself. You know what I'm saying? Pride explained himself. You the jury. You know what I'm saying? You the jury. I'm the defense attorney. You let me know what you think about that. Prodigy explained himself. And then you heard Keith Murray explain himself years after Pride left. What's up with that? You don't find that to be odd and suspicious? Man, I love you all except for the ones I don't. Peace.